Okay, this is the fishing boat, the inflatable I use for lake trout, salmon, uh, regular trout. Uh, I fish warm water in the summertime. I'll show you how I've got it rigged. Uh, most of the stuff, a lot of the stuff is homemade. Uh, these are these can be difficult boats or a daunting task to set up for fishing, but I'll show you exactly what I did to uh, set it up. It's rigged with uh, planer boards. Uh, I use the planer boards. I these are homemade, and I made the planer board mast, which uh, pins in. If you look right here. Uh, this is a galvanized steel tube. I welded a bolt, cut the head off of it, and the stud sticks through one of the grommets on the boat, and I drilled a hole through the stud, and I put a circ clip in it to hold it in place. Same on each side. And then I welded a vertical tube here, which goes up. This is the mass for the planer boards, uh, a couple of old saltwater reels. I use for uh, obvious reasons to uh, let it out, let out the line. Planer boards work really, really well. Um, Atwood makes a set of lights uh, which clamp onto the boat. Uh, they're not cheap. They're, I don't know, 25 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that um, for night running, dark time, dark running. Uh, i got a spotlight there which connects to the battery. Uh, I've got a, one of those small batteries runs on a fish finder. Uh, or runs the fish finder and the light and any other electronics you may need. Uh, rod holders, um, got a set of rod holders here. I just bolted them to a piece of wood and, and clamped them to the seat so I can remove this uh, when I'm out with the family not fishing. Uh, that tube right there, uh, that goes from the front seat to the front seat to the back seat and it's through bolted. Uh, that also, there's a seat that goes there which I put on in the summertime when my daughter's with me she can sit in the seat um, cheap seats uh, this is the seat uh, by the way that tube what that tube does is it stabilizes these uh, seats here so they don't rock um, otherwise you know they're just attached to the to the rubber pontoon here um, if you don't put something in front to back that's solid to stabilize it you'll get like a, a rocking in the seats back and forth uh, this is just a cheap seat, $17 seat. We'll see how long it lasts. I threw bolted it um, because the first trip out with them, I uh, stripped the screw out of it. So I threw bolted it to a uh, swivel swivel seat. Works really good. For, it is uh, for what it is. Uh, rod holder there that's you bolted to that tube. Um, the tube's kind of nice there because you can mount all kinds of stuff to it if you want to. Um, you know, get it off the seat. A uh, good place to hang stuff, attach stuff to. Um, uh, it's a 20 horse uh, Tohatsu four stroke. Runs great. Runs in uh, about 27 miles an hour top speed. Uh, this boat is 12.5 uh, feet long. Uh, very heavy though. It's a heavy, it's a two, th uh, two millimeter thick um, construction as opposed to 1.2. So it's about twice as heavy, but it's very, very durable, and that's what I wanted. Um, okay, homemade downriggers. They work awesome. Uh, these are homemade downriggers. What I did was I took a, I got a bunch of crap laying around, pipe and stuff. Uh, piece of, I think this is one and an eighth um, galvanized conduit. Had a set of uh, brackets here, uh, channel that I have bolted to the tra transom and I originally had dollies on this so I could kind of scoot it around when I was at the lake uh, with, I didn't have a trailer for it so uh, it's on a trailer now so the the channel is still there so what I did was I took I cut the top of the dolly off where the wheel was and I welded on these tubes use these old saltwater reels um, 80, po 80 pound test mono um, I've actually, anybody who questions how strong 80 pound test mono is, I had a 1903 trophy for about uh, 15 years and um, we get caught in the rip down in the, on the shore and with these reels in 80 pound test mono we'd hook a lobster pot trolling a niner rig 
and uh, we try to get it loose and I, more times than I can count we actually as the current was running uh, probably three or four knots uh, we actually held a 3,000 pound boat in the rip snagged on a lobster pot on 80 pound test on the boat rod uh, it's like a, a pretty strong boat rod obviously um, actually stopped the boat dead held it right in the rip of course we weren't in gear but uh, pretty strong stuff man um, so downrigger balls uh, make my own releases uh, I refuse to pay ridiculous amounts of money for releases so these are just battery clips and what I do is I take uh, um, you can buy this uh, gasket I have a bunch of it sitting around it's like a rubber stuff you get it in a hardware store that brown rubber stuff and uh, just some JB weld and I JB weld those pads on there releases work great um, just you bolted set of uh, rod holders right to the downriggers the way I go whole thing cost me practically nothing of course I had the reels I've also built those uh, I built a set of downriggers for an old John boat out of uh, I put a post in that came up and I bought a uh, clothesline reel of I think it's a galvanized steel clothesline reel they're about 15 bucks a piece at a hardware store they work great as down as downrigger reels um, just you know attach a pulley to it uh, grab some cable and, and you're up and going uh, used a t-nut for uh, the clutch to tension it of course there's no uh, counters on these so uh, what I do is I use a fish finder um, transducers mounted down there I don't know if you can see it uh, right there uh, that's transducer I'll show you the fish finder in a second works really good and I use a fish finder to uh, tell me the depth of the ball uh, where the ball is of course it marks the fish too so works really good so that's it man uh, that's what I did uh, rear stern light which I gotta uh, I gotta do something with this uh, this isn't very solid I don't like that so I'm going to uh, today I'm gonna probably leave the bottom section on and screw it right to the transom and then uh, I will um, then I'll be able to thread the top section onto it so uh, I'll feel more confident about that I don't want to lose that light so go ahead and out salmon fishing tomorrow morning Lake Champlain in the south end. We'll see how we do. Uh, let me go get the fish finder. I'll show you that. So the Velcro is right to the seat. I just pull it right off when I'm ready to come in. I also have uh, GPS Velcro there. Uh, it's an old Eagle GPS. Gives me uh, speed over ground. Gives me uh, trolling speed. Tells me how fast I'm going. Also, I can uh, uh, when I hit a fish, I can save a waypoint mark the bait and uh, follow uh, take take the plot trail right back to where I was uh, where I hit that fish so works really good uh, good thing I kept that GPS so that's it that's the old uh, not old but um, just uh, another thing uh, it is an inflatable keel that's the cock for the uh, air um, once I take it off the trailer I just slap the pump on it give it a few pumps and it pumps the keel up um, so aluminum deck and uh, self bailing just pull the plug in the back water runs right out the back and uh, pretty neat little boat not bad for 1200 bucks of course the motor costs more you know twice that but um, great fishing platform very light you can pull it behind anything uh, I could pull it behind a Can-Am spider if I wanted to so there you go uh, hope you enjoy uh, send me a message if you got any questions uh, if you got any tips I'd love to see them thank you